Good morning. Thanks for joining the Daily Rundown. I'm Kara Rucker. Top stories on this Wednesday, a passenger and freight train collide in Greece, killing dozens of people. Schoolgirls in Iran are being poisoned by the hundreds. But first, Chicago's Mayor Lori Lightfoot loses re-election. This is Straight Arrow News, unbiased, straight facts. I received a call from Mayor Lightfoot congratulating me on being in the runoff. A few months ago, they said they didn't know who I was. Well, if you didn't know, now you know. Democratic Mayor Lori Lightfoot of Chicago has lost her bid for re-election. With eight other candidates in the mayoral race, no candidate received 50% of the vote. On April 4th, there will be a runoff election with the top two candidates from Tuesday night's election. Chicago Public Schools CEO and City Budget Director Paul Vallis will face off against Cook County Board of Commissioners member Brandon Johnson. Lightfoot finished in third place. The mayor conceded, telling supporters she is rooting and praying for the next mayor of Chicago. Obviously, we didn't win the election today, but I stand here with my head held high and a heart full of gratitude. A passenger train carrying hundreds of people collided at high speed with an oncoming freight train. 32 people were killed and at least 85 others were injured. The collision resulted in a fiery scene in North Greece. Several train cars derailed with three bursting into flames. Crews in the dark searched the wreckage for survivors. The possible cause of the collision was not immediately clear. The regional governor confirmed the trains were traveling on the same track. The crash occurring as the passenger train carrying 350 people emerged from a tunnel. Just days after a Department of Energy assessment concluded COVID-19 was most likely the result of a lab leak in Wuhan, China, another intelligence agency in a separate investigation has the same conclusion. FBI Director Christopher Wray said in a Fox News interview Tuesday, the Bureau's assessment of the origins of COVID concluded with it most likely leaking from a lab in Wuhan, China. While the Department of Energy put a low confidence rating on its report, Ray said the FBI has moderate confidence in its conclusion. Ray couldn't give many details because much of the assessment is classified. Ray also said the Chinese government tried to thwart the work of U.S. agencies trying to investigate COVID's origins. Four other U.S. intelligence agencies have released their own findings, concluding the virus jumped from animals to humans at a wet market in China. A divide even among federal intel agencies, just as America is, on where COVID came from. The Federal Aviation Administration is investigating a close call between a JetBlue flight preparing to land and a Learjet taking off at Boston Logan International Airport Monday night. The FAA said the pilot of the Learjet did not have clearance for takeoff. According to the FAA, an air traffic controller instructed the Learjet pilot to line up and wait on its runway. The pilot read back the instructions clearly, but began a takeoff roll instead. The JetBlue flight was preparing to land on an intersecting runway. The pilot took evasive action and initiated a climb out as the Learjet crossed the intersection. The JetBlue flight coming from Nashville to Boston eventually landed safely at the airport. Nearly 700 schoolgirls have been poisoned by toxic gas in Iran since November. More than 10 girls' schools have reported poisoning incidents. There haven't been any deaths reported related to the poisonings. Dozens of girls have reported a rotten fish or tangerine smell before falling ill. Iran's prosecutor general said he opened a criminal investigation last week. Iran has faced much unrest in its streets for months with one of its greatest criticisms being its treatment of women. Parents of school children believe the poisonings are a deliberate attempt to force girls' schools to shut down. Canadians appear to be cutting back on drinking as beer and wine sales in Canada dipped to a new decade low. Overall alcohol sales between 2021 and 2022 decreased by 1.2%, marking the first decline since 2013 and the largest drop in more than a decade. According to Statistics Canada, the volume of beer sold dropped 2.8%. 
Wine sales decreased by 4%, and that's the largest decrease ever recorded by the government data cruncher going back to 1949. Come April 1st, Canada is raising federal taxes on beer by 6.3%. We'll have to wait until next year to see if it causes a further decline in people buying alcohol. And these are your top stories on this Wednesday morning. Thanks for watching the Daily Rundown with Straight Arrow News. We're on a mission to bring back trustworthy journalism by only serving you, not an agenda. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Until then, I'm Kara Rocker. Have a great day.